Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to look at the problem shortest source to destination path. Now guys, this particular problem is an application of PFS and again a standard DSA problem. So starting with the problem statement, it says that you are given a 2D binary matrix A of dimensions n cross m. Your task is to find the minimum number of steps required to reach from 0, 0 to x, y, right? So in the input, we are basically given one input matrix, right, of dimension n cross m. And along with this, we are given two values, x and y. So x equals to something and y equals to something. And x and y together are basically going to represent our index, right? And our task is to find the minimum distance between 0, 0 and the index x, comma, y. So x, comma, y is present somewhere in the matrix, right? Now see guys, one note is given, it says that you can only move uh, in four directions, left, right, up and down, right? And only move through the cells which contains the value 1. So according to the problem, we are given a binary matrix, right? So there are two possible values, either 0 or 1. Whenever we have 0, then we can't move through that cell. And whenever we have 1, so we can move through that cell. Now let me explain the same thing using the given example. First of all, I am simply going to remove this particular stuff, right? Okay, so... We are given a matrix here and along with this we are given x, x equals to 2 and y equals to 3. So first of all let me draw the matrix. In the first row we have 1, 0, 0, 0. Then we have 1, 1, 0, 1 in the second row. After this we have 0, 1, 1, 1, right? See guys, what we need to do is we need to find the distance of index 0, 0 from the index 2 comma 3 following the 0 based indexing. So 2 comma 3 will be somewhere at this place, right? This is 2 comma 3. Okay, so how we can find the distance? See guys, this is the first index that we have. We have to move from this particular index. So we can consider it as a source, right? So we have to move from this particular source. So I can simply move to this particular cell or this particular cell. But you can see that this cell contains the value 0, right? So I can't move to this cell. So I'll simply move to uh, this particular cell in the down direction, right? After this, I'm going to take a right move because there is no any other possibility. So I'll simply move to right cell. After this, I'll move to this particular cell, right? So let me write the indices as well. So this is, if this is 0, 0, then this will be 1, comma 0, right? After this, we have 1, comma 1. Then here we have 2, comma 1. And as I take a right move here, so this will be index 2, comma 2. And after this, again, if I take a right move, then this will be 2, comma 3, right? So this is how we can reach our destination from the source, right? Now, I hope you have understood this. How many steps I have taken? So this is first step, then we have second, then third, fourth, and fifth, right? So we have taken five steps. So five is basically the output for this particular example. Five is the minimum number of steps required to reach the destination which is 2 comma 3 from 0 comma 0 right now guys i hope you have understood the problem statement so let's talk about the solution now okay so i have written one example here right and we are going to use this particular example in order to build the intuition let's see how according to the problem we need to find the minimum distance between the index 0 0 and the given index x comma y which is 2 comma 3 in our case right let me name this as source and this as destination right so we need to find the minimum distance between source and destination how we can do this we can basically try out every particular distance and then we are going to check out every cell at that distance let me explain guys so i'll start with distance one what are the cells at distance one i'm basically checking that can one be my answer because if any cell at distance one is equal to destination then i can say that one is my answer right so first i'll check with one there are two cells at distance one. First is this one and the second is this one, right? So are these, uh, like, is any of these cell equal to my destination? No. So I can't say that one is my answer, right? After this, what I'll do is I'll try out the same with distance two. So there are three cells at distance two, guys. One is this one, second is this one, and the third one is this, right? But two of these cells are not valid because these are storing the value zero. And whenever we have value zero in any cell, then we can't move through that cell, right? Okay, so only valid cell is this one. So I'll check, is this cell is equal to my destination? No, so I can't say that two is my answer, right? So now I will try out every cell at distance three. Then what are the cells at distance three? There are again three cells at distance three, right? So see guys, again, two cells are storing value zero and this is the only valid cell. So is this particular cell equal to my destination? No, so I can't say that three is my answer, right? After this, I will move to distance four. So what are the cells at distance four? There are two cells. And you can see that this cell is storing one, but still we can't 
reach this particular cell right because you can see that we have zero in the middle so we can't uh, read this particular cell at distance 4 so this is the only valid cell which is at distance 4 right so is this equal to my destination no so again 4 is not my answer now I will check out every cell at distance 5 so what are the cells at distance 5 the only cell is this one right and this particular cell is equal to the destination so now you can see that guys we have found our destination at distance 5 right and what is the guarantee that this is the distance 5 because we are checking at every cell at distance 5 and if the cell is equal to destination then this is definitely going to be at distance 5 right so 5 is going to be the output for this particular example now guys I want you to observe something see we are basically checking out every distance right so this is at distance 0 this is at distance 1 then this is at distance 2 when I say distance 2 then I'm talking about distance 2 from the source right and this these are at distance three from the source then these two cells are at distance four from the source then this is at distance five from the source right guys instead of saying that distance five four one zero can I say that this is at level zero now this is at level one then I have level two then I have level three then I have level four and at last I have level five right so now we can build the intuition that we are doing nothing but trying out the level order traversal right we are checking out every possible level so in which type of traversal we check every possible level this is nothing but BFS or the level of the traversal right both means the same so breadth first search is going to be used here in order to find the shortest path even we already know this particular thing right because one of the possible application of BFS is to find the shortest path between two so uh, like nodes right or I'll say two cells in this particular case so guys we can use BFS in order to get the solution whenever we use BFS then we need to use the Q data structure right so we have Q. So Q is initially going to store a uh, 0 comma 0. You can see that this is for level 0 because this is the node which is at distance 0 from itself. You can see that 0 0 is the source, right? So we can we will uh, pop it out after this we will store the neighbor of this particular node right there are two neighbors now these are going to be at distance one and level is going to increase so we need a level counter as well so we are going to have a level counter which is initially equal to zero after this guys there is one more thing to observe and that particular thing is C from this particular cell I will go to these two cells let me draw it somewhere so I have one here then I have one here then I have one here right after this we have zero and then one again you can see that this is the order so initially I'm at this cell I'll store the neighbor of this cell so there are two neighbors right there are two neighbors now when I go to this particular neighbor then again you can see that there are three neighbors of this cell one is this one second is this one and third is this one but I can't go to this particular neighbor again because it is already visited right so we have to keep track of visited as well so I'll say that okay I need a visited array as well and this visited array is going to keep track of every visited node and this is a 2d array right now guys see we have to check out every possible level so initially Q is storing this level so I'll say that okay what is the Q size Q size is equal to 1 so I'll traverse every particular cell in the Q so I'll say that okay for I equals to 0 and I smaller than size then I plus plus this is how we perform BFS right and inside this I will pop out every value and then I will store the neighbor of that value but before that I will check is this e equal to my destination right so let me explain the same thing using the pseudocode okay so I have written the pseudocode here guys you can see that so the first step is to initialize the level or path equals to zero right so I have written it path but it is actually the level after this we are going to create a queue which is initially going to store zero then we have to visit zero right because now zero is a visited cell after this each time we have to traverse the level you can see that we have the current level and we are traversing it so first we are getting the index and this index zero we are checking if this is equal to my destination so index is zero comma zero right so I'll check the first value with x because x is representing the first value then I'll check the second value with y if these both value are matching then I can say that okay I have to return the path right because path is basically going to store the answer or the distance and we are concerned about the distance after this if this is not the case then I have to store the neighbors right the question is how to store the neighbors you can see that let's say this is my cell and I want to store the neighbors so there are basically some conditions that we need to follow let me explain each of them guys the first condition is when I want to store a cell then the index of that particular uh, cell is valid see let's say I'm at this particular cell 
and I want to store uh, the neighbor of that cell. I want to store the right neighbor. So there is no any right neighbor, right? So before checking any neighbor, I have to make sure that that particular neighbor is a valid index. So I will check that the first condition is a uh, valid index, right? Let me change the color. So I'll use green color here. Valid index. This is the first condition that I need to check. The second condition is, see guys, we can't move through a cell which contains zero, right? So this means that the cell must contain the value one. So cell value is again the second criteria that we are going to follow, right? And the third condition is we have to check whether the value is already visitor, visited or not, right? So we have to check visited. These are the three things that we have to keep in mind while storing any neighbor in the queue again, right? So for the second level, the queue will have these two values, which is nothing but index uh, like one zero and zero one isn't it so now we have to check two values so the queue size will be two and we are going to run this particular loop two times and after checking the whole level we are going to increase the level count each time right so now guys this is the whole idea that we are going to follow once we have checked out one level then we are going to increase the level count right and this is how we are going to move and if this whole loop is completed which is the bfs traversal and we are not able to find the destination then we are simply going to return minus one right so this is how we are going to solve the problem guys talking about the time complexity so the time complexity is nothing but equal to o of n cross m right because we are checking out every possible cell you can see from this particular explanation right we are checking out each cell and the space complexity is again o of n cross m because we have a visited array and we have a queue as well right now guys let me show you the code there is a lot to explain from the code guys because I have not explained how actually we are going to implement storing neighbors, right? So see guys, we are checking out three conditions. The first one is the index because I have already explained. The second one is if the cell is already visited or what, right? And the third condition is the cell value must be one. So these three conditions we are checking out for each neighbor. There are four possible neighbor, left, right, up and down. And similarly, we are doing the same for this as well, right? So guys, this is how we can solve the problem. The rest, all the things are going to remain same. And this is the condition and this condition is a uh, like be, like I'll say that edge case right so what is this condition this condition says that if my initial value is zero then we can't move to any other cell right so we have to keep in mind whenever the initial value is zero then we can't reach our destination right so in this case our answer is going to be a uh, minus one so you can see that whenever we have the value at zero zero is equal to zero then i can't move to that cell right so answer is minus one for this particular case now guys this is the python code i hope everything related to this particular problem is clear to you like the code the explanation the approach and the intuition right so you can see that the same approach we are going to follow here as well these are for storing the neighbors there are four neighbors right and we have to visit the neighbor we have to visit the neighbor as soon as we store them in the queue right well this is all about this video guys thank you